I'm Pat Duga. This screencast is about graphing exponential functions, a new type of function where we're taking a base number and multiplying it by itself a certain variable number of times. We're going to focus in this first part on exponential growth functions. The second part will deal with exponential decay functions. Let's start off with some terms here. An exponential function is a special kind of function where the base itself is constant and what's variable is actually the exponent. We have two basic kinds of exponential functions. Uh, exponential growth is where the base is greater than one. And this is a function that as x is increasing, the function is continuously going to increase. Uh, the rate of increase is going to depend on the magnitude of the base. Then we have exponential decay functions. Exponential decay functions occur where the base is between zero and one, not inclusive. And this is a function where, where it's going to continuously decrease as x increases. Now in both cases, whether it's growth or decay, there is a certain factor, and that's the value of the base. So that's called the growth factor, the decay factor in an exponential function. And the, the larger that number is, uh, in the case of growth, the more rapidly the function is going to grow. And the smaller it is, the closer it is to zero, the more quickly it's going to decay. And finally, an important term, not just in exponential functions, but in general mathematically, is that of an asymptote. And in this case, we're talking about what are called horizontal asymptotes, which are, uh, it's, a, it's a value of output for which the function never actually reaches. It gets close, but it doesn't reach. So let's look at parent function of exponential growth functions. So the parent function is f of x equals b to the x, where b is a value of the base greater than 1. It is continuous, that's a feature of exponential functions, it works for all values of x. And it is a one to one function because there's only one value for every one output. It's also always increasing in the case of growth. Its domain is the set of all real numbers. The base function, the parent function, uh, b to the x, its range is all positive real numbers. Uh, its asymptote actually is the, is the line y equals 0, also known as the x-axis, because what happens is this is a, what this base parent function looks like. It actually never reaches 0, because what happens, even if we raise it to a very large negative uh, power, so if we have, let's, let's just say we have like 3 to the minus 50. 3 to the minus 50 can be written as 1 over 3 to the 50. And that is a very, very small number, but it's not zero. And in fact, no matter how not large in the negative direction this gets, it's still going to approach, but never reach zero. So the asymptote, we would say, is the x-axis, or the line y equals zero. It has an intercept along the y-axis of the point zero comma one. Let's look at graphing exponential functions as an example. So we have, a, we have y equals four to the x. We want to graph it and state the domain and range. So as with any function, we're going to make a table of values. One of the values you always want to use is the zero value. And in any exponential fu function, as long as it's not modified in some way for its input, this is going to be the point 0, 1. Because what happens is I put in a, a 0 for x, and I get y equals 4 to the 0. And any number to the 0th power is 1. And then we'll try some points on either side, um, negative 2. Here we have y equals 4 to the negative 2 power, which is 1 over 4 squared, or 1 over 16. Here we have y equals 4 to the minus 1 power. That's equal to 1 over 4 to the 1, or just 1 fourth. And if we continue this, y equals 4 to the first. That's, of course, 4. And then for an input of 2, y equals 4 to the second power, and that's equal to 16. So if we graph those points, we get something that looks like this. And every exponential function is going to intercept that um, y-axis, unless it's shifted left, right, up, or down in some way, it's going to intercept right there at 0, 1. And so when we plot all those points, we get this nice exponential curve. And 16, of course, is off this graph. But we get a rapidly growing curve. And why is it rapidly growing? Well, it's because every time we multiply by 4 as x increases by 1. So each time, the the graph increases by a factor of four, very rapidly growing. So let's look at the domain and range. Well, um, for all exponential functions, the domain is all real numbers. There's nothing in x that's going to cause problems here, all real numbers. Any value of x can be used. The range is all positive real numbers, because no matter how um, 
negative we get with this, we're still going to have f 1 over 4 to some very large power, and that's still going to be close to 0. So the range is all positive real numbers. So, you know, all real numbers for the domain and all positive real numbers y greater than 0 for the range. Let's look at transformations of exponential functions. When we, when we graph them, um, this works very much like all the other transformations we've looked like, we've looked at. You'll notice there's the H and the K, and the H and the K are going to be responsible for the horizontal and vertical shift, respectively. Let's look at the H for the horizontal translation. H is positive, in other words, and this has to be in the form X minus H, so if H is positive, then it's going to shift it to the right. If H is negative, it's going to shift um, the absolute value of H units to the left. And then the number that on the far right is going to shift it up and down vertically. If k is positive, it's going to shift it up. If k is negative, it's going to shift it down. The number that's before the exponential part, this a term, is going to be responsible for uh, stretching the graph. If a is greater than 1, it's going to stretch the graph vertically. If the graph, if a is between 0 and 1, it's going to actually compress it. And it kind of makes sense because we're taking the whole exponential part and multiplying it by another number. So the bigger that number is, the more vertically stretched it's going to be. If it's a small number between 0 and 1, it's actually going to compress it. And this is all consistent with how we've done other types of functions. So it's not really memorizing new things. Um, should be very, very consistent. Let's look at this in an example. So we've got y equals 3 to the x minus 2. And we want to look at the graph of it and the domain and range. Okay, well this is very much like its parent function y equals 3 to the x, but shifted down two units. Why? Because it's got that k term here, negative 2. Okay, so um, we can plot some points here. If we put in a 0, we get 3 to the 0 minus 2, which is equal to 1 minus 2, which is equal to 1. And if we do a similar thing to all these other points, we will get their similar points. Now it's again, all the points are shifted down by two, you'll see here. So for example, I'll just do a couple of them, one in the negative and one on the positive side, negative three. So we've got three to the minus three, minus two. And that gives us approximately negative 1.963. On the positive side, when we have three for X, that gives us three to the three minus two and three to three is 27. 27 minus 2 is 25. So with this set of points, we can then make a graph. And this is what the graph looks like after we plot a few of these points. Now, the parent function 3 to the x would go through at 0, 1, like any other base exponential function. And then at 1, we would have 3, and so on. At negative 1, we would get 1 third. And so it would look something like this. So I didn't really draw it super well, but essentially, the graph is shifted down by two units. You can see it shifted down two units here. You can see it shifted down two here, and the same thing here. So, so from the parent function 3 to the x, 3 to the x minus 2 is just 3 to the x shifted down by 2. So that does make some modifications to the range, not the domain. Uh, again, it's an exponential function, so the domain includes all real numbers, which is this symbol r. And, but the range now, instead of being from y greater than 0, it's now y greater than negative 2, because negative 2 is the very smallest it can be. And in fact, it never is negative 2. So the range includes all y's greater than negative 2. Let's look at a different kind of shift. So we have y equals 2 to the x minus 1. So it is taking the parent function y equals 2 to the x and shifting it to the right by 1 because remember it's in the form x minus h so that means h is positive 1 to the right and so what happens we have instead of uh, you know 0 comma 1 we shift it to the right and so we put in we put in a 0 for x we get 2 to the x minus 1 2 to the 0 minus 1 becomes 2 to the minus 1 or 1 over 2. That's where the 1 half comes in. We'll look at negative 3. That becomes 2 to the minus 3 minus 1 or 2 to the minus 4, 1 over 2 to the 4th. 2 to the 4th is 16, so that becomes 1 over 16, which is decimal-wise 0.065. 
On the positive side, when x equals 3, we get 2 to the 3 minus 1, 2 to the second, or 4. When we plot all those points, when we plot all those points, we get this graph. We have, um, you know, actually also at 1, we get 2 to the 1 minus 1 or 2 to the 0. So instead, everything gets shifted over to the right by one unit. Okay, so from the parent function, if you were to look at the parent function, it would go through 0 comma 1. It would be, it would go through 1 comma 2, 2 comma 4. Okay, so the whole thing is shifted to the right. So let's look at its domain and range. Still, the domain is all real numbers. The range is um, the same, actually, as the original parent function. It's been shifted to the right by one unit, which does not change the range at all. It's still going to reach a minimum value at y, approaching y equals zero. Okay, so let's look at a more complex one that involves some shift in two directions. Y equals four to the x minus two power plus three. So we're going to take the parent function 4 to the x, and we've got two transformations going on here. First of all, we've got a vertical shift up by 3 because k is positive 3. Second of all, we have a shift to the right by 2 because h in the form x minus h, h is 2. Okay, so we take that parent function 4 to the x. We're going to shift it up 3 and right 2. And of course, you can continue to plot points. So if I put in, let's say, a negative 2, I get 4 to the minus 4 plus 3. So that's equal to 1 over 4 to the 4th plus 3, which is a number just a little bit bigger than 3. Put in a 0, I get 4 to the 0 minus 2, or 4 to the minus 2 plus 3. So now I'm at, I'm all the way up to 3 and 1 16th, very slow increase here, but it will eventually start increasing rapidly. If I put in a 1, I get 4 to the 1 minus 2 or 4 to the minus 1 plus 3. If I put in a 2, I get 4 to the 0 plus 3. And finally, that's starting to make a difference. That's actually 1 plus 3 equals 4. And then 3, I get 4 to the 3 minus 2 or 4 to the 1 plus 3. That's equal to 4 plus 3 or 7 rapid increase of the function. So that's what it looks like. If we looked at the original parent function, um, we would see that it shifted both up and to the right from the parent function of 4 to the x. This concludes the screencast on graphing exponential growth functions. In the next section, we'll look at exponential decay functions.